Hello, my name is Juanjo García Ripoll. I work at the Spanish Research Council in Madrid, and I would like to welcome you to this online presentation of our work on the quantum control of transmon qubits. This work has been done in collaboration with Andrés Ruiz Chamorro, a master's student in a group, and Eric Torrentegui, a postdoctoral researcher expert in quantum control. An e-print of this work is available at the archive. Transmon qubit is a superconducting quantum circuit made of the Josephson junction and a capacitor. It supports a very good balance between reproducibility, operation speed, and coherence, and it supports most of the quantum computing architecture of the superconductors nowadays. The Transmon qubit is modeled as a weakly nonlinear harmonic oscillator. This cosine potential is induced by the Josephson junction. The eigenstates of this potential have an unharmonic energy level spacing. The distance between 0 and 1 is different between that of 1 and 2. The unharmonicity alpha, which is this difference, can be pretty large, of hundreds of megahertz. This large unharmonicity allows us to address the 0 and 1 states separately, implementing single qubit rotations between them, without leakage into the states with 2, 3, and more excitations. In this work, we consider also tunable frequency qubits. These qubits they have squids instead of junctions, which we can control using magnetic field. The, applying a certain magnetic flux, we can change the depth of the potential and thereby tune the frequency of the qubit. This process is analogous to the squeezing of a harmonic oscillator, and I have studies as such. For a quantum computer, we need two qubit gates. These two qubit gates they can be supported by the capacitive interaction between nearby qubits, as in this picture. The capacitive interactions allows the exchange of excitations between the transmons, provided that the frequencies are close enough. We see in this plot, as a function of the frequency of one of the qubits relative to the other one, we find different level crossings. At this point, the two qubits have the same frequency. The 0, 1 and 1, 0 states, they are degenerate and they can exchange excitations, implementing a swap gate. At this other point, which is the one that concerns this work, the 1, 1 and 2, 0 states, they are degenerate. The energy splitting that appears here will allow us to implement a control phase gate. To implement the phase gate, we start with one qubit highly detuned from the other one. We lower down the frequency of this qubit down to the crossing point and back. If the process is sufficiently adiabatic, the evolution is diagonal, and the eigenstates in the computational basis, they only acquire phases. Due to the interaction with the 2-0 state, the 1-1 one -one state acquires an additional phase. This phase can be sufficient to implement the control phase gate. During the implementation of the ramp down and up of the frequency of the qubit, we have squeezing, as I said before. This distorts the wave function of the transmon and has to be considered in the dynamics and the design of the control. A very accurate way to describe the squeezing is to use a Gaussian variational wave function to model the dynamics of the ground state of the transmon. The width of this Gaussian evolves in time. The evolution depends on how we tune frequency of the transmog in time as well. However, we can see this equation in a different way. As a way to design the control for a given variation of the transmog width. In other words, if we know that we have to go from an initial frequency to a final frequency, we also know that we have to go from an initial Gaussian width to a final width. We can design a path rho of t of arbitrary shape and then infer the control of the qubit that we need to engineer. And this control is not necessarily adiabatic, and it can be arbitrarily fast. We have applied this to the ramping of the frequency of an isolated transmon going from a high frequency to a lower one. There are other controls. For instance, we can linearly ramp the magnetic flux that goes through the squid, leading to this profile. Or we can use a fast quasi-adiabatic method to engineer a control that tries to preserve the instantaneous eigenstates of the qubit Hamiltonian. In comparison with these two other techniques, the variational method produces lower errors and also faster ramps. Moreover, the controls that it creates are smooth and lead to very slow changes in the magnetic flux through the squid. However, when we try to extend these controls to produce a control phase gate by going down and up in frequency with the same profile, we don't find very good fidelities. The fast quasi method can be extended to study the eigenstates of a couple Hamiltonian they produce fidelities which can be reasonably good, like 0.1%. The 
However, the variational method or the linear ramp of the flux are not so good anymore. Why is it so? One obvious reason for the errors is that we do not time the gates enough so as to produce the right phase. However, more importantly, we have leakage. While the FACWA tries to produce the instantaneous eigenstates at the interaction point, the variational method aims to produce the instantaneous eigenstates of the isolated transmode. These are not eigenstates of the interaction, and at this point they get distorted and leak into the higher energy subspaces. Interestingly, we can easily correct this type of errors. We simply need to introduce a waiting time once we have reached the desired frequency. When we wait around this position, the same mechanism that causes the leakage autocorrects the errors and brings back the qubit to the desired 1-1 one -one state. Moreover, we can also tune the frequency that we reach during the passage. By slightly detuning from the crossing point, we can also adjust the phase that is acquired making it closer to the pi 4 or any other phase that we want to create. When we apply this technique to all of the controls that I showed before, we said that all of them uh, exhibit improvement in errors of several orders of magnitude. As expected, the variational method is still the best one and the fastest one for the techniques that we have seen. The gates in general now have to take into account not only the ramp time, but also the waiting time, and thus they are slightly slower. However, for these experimental parameters that I show here, which belong to the experiment by Leo Di Carlo in depth, the gate times are competitive with the ones that are already being realized in the lab. Moreover, the same controls also work in the case of imperfections and the coherence. The plot above shows a realistic existing qubit with 15 microseconds lifetime. In this case, we can achieve systematically errors below 0.2% with any of the controls. If we had access to a new generation of transform qubits with a coherence times over 100 microseconds, we can even achieve such error rates that are compatible with fault tolerance quantum computation. So the conclusion of this work is that we have studied many different controls that can be computed semi-analytically and engineered very easily in the lab. These controls implement a control phase gate for a tunable frequency qubit. Once we have designed the pulse that we want to use for the ramp, there are only two experimental parameters to tune, the waiting time and the destination frequency, which allows us to correct many of the errors that happen in this process. Errors below 0.01% for upcoming qubits with over 100 microsecond lifetimes are already accessible with this technique. Moreover, the variational method gives rise to very smooth controls, which are finite bandwidth and which may be suitable for current experiments. Finally, I would like to thank my collaborators, Andres Ruiz and Eric Torrontegui, as well as the funding agencies that support this work.